Working at the front of the radiator support, remove the two T20 torque fasteners from the intake duct as indicated by the green arrows. Working at the intake air duct connection on the air filter housing, using a small flathead screwdriver, release the retaining tabs on each side and pull the duct off. Normally aspirated model is shown here. For turbocharged engines, the duct on the radiator support unscrews the same way as the previous step. The duct for the air filter housing is also removed the same way. The air filter housing is in a different spot. Follow the duct and release the tabs to remove it. Then pull the intake duct out of the radiator support and remove it from the vehicle, indicated by the green arrow. Next, you will have to disconnect all six ignition coil electrical connectors, green arrows. Unlock the ignition coil electrical connector by pulling the tab up 90 degrees, green arrow. Next, slide the electrical connector out of the ignition coil, green arrow. Then remove the two ignition coils closest to the Valvetronic motor, green arrow. Remove the ignition coil from the cylinder head by pulling straight up. If the coil resists, twist when pulling and break free from the spark plug. The ignition coil rubber boot can become stuck to the spark plug over time. You can also use a flathead screwdriver to lever the coil up and out of the cylinder head. Be very careful using this method as the coil is made of plastic and easily damages. Disconnect the Valvetronic motor electrical connector by squeezing the tabs, indicated by the green arrows, and pulling the connector off the motor. Using a four millimeter Allen, rotate the Valvetronic motor clockwise manually using the hex located at the rear of the motor, green arrow. Rotate motor slowly until you feel a slight resistance, then stop. Next, you will have to remove the fastener located at the bottom of the Valvetronic motor. This fastener attaches the motor to a small bracket mounted on the valve cover. Remove the lower E8 Valvetronic motor fastener, green arrow. Remove the two upper Valvetronic motor E8 fasteners, green arrow. Using a four millimeter Allen, rotate the Valvetronic motor counterclockwise manually using the hex located at the rear of the motor. Rotate the motor slowly and guide it out of the cylinder head. Store the Valvetronic motor in a safe place. Now it's time to take care of the oil leak caused by the faulty Valvetronic motor gasket. This photo shows a puddle of oil from the leaky gasket, green arrow. The oil gathers under the motor on the top of the valve cover. Remove the two T30 torque fasteners for the Valvetronic motor gasket as indicated by the green arrows. Using a flathead screwdriver, gently lever the gasket out of the valve cover. You will not need a lot of force to do this. The gasket will pop right out. Once the gasket is free from the valve cover, remove and discard it. When installing the new gasket, be sure the black stripe is facing up, as indicated by the green arrow. Then press into the valve cover until fully seated. Install the Valvetronic motor in reverse order of removing. Use a 4 millimeter Allen bit to rotate the motor clockwise while installing into the cylinder head. Once flush with the cylinder head, install the fasteners and tighten. Remember, if you removed aluminum fasteners, replace them each time they are removed. Be sure the wiring harness is routed as it was before and the engine covers are properly aligned. Turn the key to the on position for 30 seconds, then off then on again for 30 seconds before starting the vehicle. When repairs are performed on the Valvetronic assembly, the limit stops have to be relearned. You will need access to a BMW scan tool to do this procedure. The limit stops are the mechanical limit stop end-to-end -end of rotation of the eccentric shaft. The DME records these stops via the eccentric shaft sensor to determine the mechanical adjustment limits of the eccentric shaft. With that said, when removing the motor to replace the gasket, you are not changing the mechanical position of any Valvetronic assembly component. 
A relearn is not always needed. Now use this with caution and when in doubt, perform the relearn. Do your research and check with up to date repair information before beginning. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article, along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.